Alrighty. Um, let's take a look at special right triangles. So there's lots of right triangles, but there are two of them that are called special. Uh, and you get each of these by taking something else and cutting it in half. The first, if I take a square and I cut that square in half, I get a right triangle. Um, and this one is called the 45, 45, 90 right triangle because it has 45 degree angles, right? Because the square originally had all 90 degree angles. And then I cut two of them in half. I just realized something. Let me check something here. Nope. Oh, okay. Sorry. Just check it. Okay. Um, and I could cut them in half to get to 45 degree angles. The other one is called, if I take an equilateral triangle and I cut it in half, I get this one. This one is called the 30, 60, 90 right triangle because it has 30 degrees. 60 degrees and 90 degrees because the original angles in the uh, equilateral triangle are all 60. When I cut it in half, I get a 90 here. This one's still a 60. That one's a 60 cut in half, so it makes it a 30. Now, on the square, I usually like to imagine that the side lengths are 1 and 1 here, which using Pythagorean theorem gives us square root of 2 over here. And I usually like to imagine that on this one, the outside uh, side lengths of the original equilateral triangle are two, and two over here, and this would be two all the way across the bottom, so it's a one here, and using Pythagorean theorem, we get square root of three over here. So these are our, our two special right triangles, and of course there's lots and lots of special right triangles that are just larger or smaller versions of one of these two. And what we're going to do is we're often going to have a larger or smaller version of a special right triangle, one of these, and we know one side length, and we're trying to figure out what the others are. So for example, say I had something like this, right, and say I knew this was a five, right? I was like, well, what are the other two sides? Well, if I could set up a proportion I would say, for example, 1 to 5, 1 to 5 should be the same as 1 to x. I just want to figure out what x is over here. Well, I could cross multiply and all, but I mean it should be clear that x has to be a 5 for this to be true, so x equals 5. We'll call this y over here. Now we're going to figure out y, and we'd say, well, 1 to 5. 1 to 5 would be the same as square root of 2 to y. Square root of 2 to y. Because we know that those, um, those little, uh, the, the scale factor will be the same for everything. So I cross multiply. Uh, 5 times square root of 2, we'll just write that as 5 times square root of 2 equals 1 times y, which is just y. And then we're done. So this is 5 times square root of 2. Say over here, say we had uh, a triangle over here that was, oh boy, pen's running dry already, but wait, they don't want to, sorry, my right triangle, what am I thinking? Right? Okay. And say I had, um, hold on a second, I'm pause this and get a better pencil. Okay, it should be a little better. So say I knew that this was like a, uh, I don't know, we'll pick a number, two. So I set up my proportions. Well, I know that uh, square root of 3 to 2, square root of 3 to 2, should equal 1 to x. So then I'll say I'll multiply, and I get 1 times 2 is 2 equals x times square root of 3. Then we'll divide by square root of 3 on both sides. I get 2 over square root of 3 equals x. Now, oh, that should be a 3. Now, 
technically we're really done here, but uh, oftentimes people don't want to leave uh, square root of 3 down the denominator. And the trick here, it's called rationalizing the denominator, is we just multiply here both numerator and denominator by square root of 3. This is just 1, technically, so we're not changing the fraction. So then I get um, 2 times square root of 3 up here. And square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. So a slightly more complicated. This answer is, in a sense, technically correct, but it's just considered bad form to leave it with the square root in the denominator. So we do this little trick, and we get this answer over here. So on the other hand, I'd have y. What I say? Um, uh, square root of 3, square root of 3 to 2, to 2 is the same as 2 to y. 2 to y. So let's see, then I get uh, square root of 3 times y equals 4, and then see, we'll divide 4 over square root of 3. We don't want to leave it that way, so we multiply it times square root of 3 over square root of 3, and we get y equals 4 to square root of 3 over 2. Right. So the trick to solving any of these is, of course, setting up these proportions. And you say, well, okay, 1 to whatever you have down here, or maybe square root of 3 to whatever you have down here. All right, so side to corresponding side equals side to corresponding side. And, um, now that we've gone over that, I'm going to go back to uh, some Khan Academy exercises, and we'll, we'll work our way through a few of those.